so good morning uh, today's class on dc machines we are going to discuss an important phenomena which is known as the armature reaction so what is armature you know it is where the conductors are present and it is rotating so it is basically the rotor where the conductors are present so what is armature reaction it is the effect of magnetic field set up by the armature current on the distribution of flux under the main pole so you know that armature current will be st established in the armature conductor so due to this armature current there will be some amount of flux produced and it will be affecting the main flux which is due to the main poles so this effect is known as the armature re reaction so i will repeat due to the armature current there will be some flux which will affect the flux which is produced under the main pole is known as armature reaction so what are the effects of armature reaction magnetic field so there are two effect so first effect is it will demagnetize or weaken the main flux so since main flux is produced by the main poles and due to the armature current whatever the flux is produced it will demagnetize or what is known as weaken the main flux that will leads to reduce generated voltage so eg whatever is should be generated should be would be less than the main uh, flux main emf due to this demagnetizing property so if you remember we have discussed the characteristic in that characteristic we have discussed that so if you draw a curve between the field current and the generated emf then without armature reaction you will be having uh, a line which is parallel to the x axis but due to the armature reaction there will be a certain drop in the voltage so this is what the effect we are discussing for the armature reaction that is to demagnetize or weaken the main flux due to which the generated emf is little bit less than what it could have generated if armature reaction is not there second effect that we are going to discuss is the cross magnetization or distorting effect of the flux so here you have the demagnetizing effect here you have the cross magnetizing effect so under cross magnetizing effect it will leads to sparking at the brushes so it will leads to sparking so under demagnetizing effect your generated voltage will reduce under cross magnetizing effect there will be a sparking at the brushes now let us understand the phenomena of armature reaction considering the flux one by one so here we will consider that there is a flux due to the main field alone and armature current is not there so armature conductor is not carrying any current so here you can see that the north pole and south pole are there which are the main poles and due to which there are some flux lines which are originating and it is passing through the armature so this is your armature so the magnetic flux lines due to the main poles are passing through the armature however we have considered that there is no armature current so if armature current is not there obviously the armature flux will not be there now uh, some terms i will be like to introduce here one term is known as the g and a which is known as the geometric neutral axis and other term is known as m and a that is magnetic neutral axis so the g and a that is the geometric neutral axis uh, will be always perpendicular to the main field so here you have the main field direction which again always be a constant in the line of the north to south pole the main field so if you have north pole here and south pole here then you will be having the main field uh, flux as this direction so anything which is perpendicular to the main field you will be having the gna that is the geometric neutral axis now the magnetic neutral axis line will be in the direction of the brushes you can assume 
So you can see that there is a brush here uh, associated with the conductor of the armature. Then in the direction of the brush, always this MNA axis will be there. So if you have a brush here, then the MNA direction will be in this direction. If you if you the conductor uh, armature is rotated and your brush in this direction, then your new MNA axis will be this. Okay, so that will discuss little bit more into detail. For now, you understand that wherever the brush will be there, there only the magnet MNA axis will be there. Now, in this case, uh, when armature current is zero, obviously the GNA axis and MNA axis is coinciding. So, GNA axis and MNA axis is coinciding because there is no armature current. So, no armature flux is there. So, only there is a flux lines due to the main field which is cutting the conductors of the uh, armature uh, conductors. So, the flux is distributed symmetrically with respect to the polar axis. So, these are the polar axis and flux is distributed symmetrically. Second, the magnetic neutral axis that is the axis along which no EMF is produced. So, MNA axis is the axis where you will be not having any EMF. So, EMF will be 0 or EG will be 0. So, it produced in the armature conductor because they move parallel to the line of flux. So, they will be moving always parallel to the line of flux. So, MNA axis you can define as the axis where the EMF will be not there. Now, MNA axis is perpendicular to the flux passing through the armature. So, in this case, you can see that MNA is uh, perpendicular to the flux which is passing through the armature. So, MNA axis can be called as axis of commutation. Now, what is commutation? We will discuss more into detail. Now, for un you have understood that the function of commutator is to convert the AC supply into uh, you know unidirectional supply so this ac supply can be converted into dc supply unidirectional supply so that is the function of a commutator and some uh, commutation uh, principle is there that we will discuss however this mna uh, is also called the axis of commutation because the reversal of current in armature conductor take place across this axis so along this axis where there is a mna axis there the reversal of the current will take place so this current which is alternating you are getting a unidirectional current so that reversal of current will take place along the mna axis now consider that armature field alone so if you have armature field alone whereas the field flux is zero so you are not having any field flux so field flux is not there only armature flux is there so you can see the direction of the armature flux due to the current carrying in the armature conductor. So here you have the direction of the armature MMF. So earlier we have seen that this is this was the direction, uh, sorry, the state. So you have this direction of FM that is the main flux MMF. However, MMF is zero for the main flux and we are having only the direction of the armature MMF. So flux set up by armature current alone, field coils being unexcited. So your field coils is unexcited, so you do not have the field MMF. However, since armature current is set up in the armature conductor, you are, ha you are having an MMF due to the armature current. The MMF, of the armature conductor combined to send the flux downward through the armature shown by the vector OFA. So due to these flux lines which are present in the armature, your armature MMF uh, is basically in the downward direction. So you have O here and F here. So this is known as OFA. So that is in the downward direction due to the armature uh, flux. Now let us combine both flux. So both fields are there because that will be the actual scenario where you will be having both the main flux as well as the armature flux. So under actual condition both the MMF that is the main flux MMF 
and the armature MMF exist simultaneously. So simultaneously both the field will be there. So here you can see that you have a north pole and south pole which are the main poles and due to which you will be having uh, the MMF uh, you will be having the flux lines which is passing through the armature conductors and due to which you will be having an MMF in this direction that is this direction which we have FM so that is the main field however due to the current carrying armature uh, you will be having an MMF which is in the downward direction that is FA so FM and FA are there which is acting simultaneously then the resultant field F will be somewhere in this direction so resultant field F will be in this direction that is the MMF so your geometric neutral axis GNA which is always perpendicular to FM so FM is in this direction so your GNA axis that is the geometric neutral axis will be in perpendicular to the main field now the MNA axis which is the axis of commutation has shifted a little bit from the GNA axis due to the rotating of the armature conductors. So now GNA and MNA axis are not coinciding which was in the first case because when uh, you were having uh, no uh, armature conductor, armature current. However, in this condition your MNA has rotated a little bit from the GNA. So you can draw the vector diagram. So you will be having your FM that is the main field in this direction and FA that is the armature MMF in this direction then you will be having the main field that is the resultant field in this direction A. Okay. So what will happen flux through the armature is no longer uniform and symmetrical rather it is distorted. So you have seen that in the first condition where we have taken only the field flux the field was symmetrical and uniform now due to the presence of the armature current there will be armature flux which will distort the main flux so there will be some amount of distortion in the main flux so you can see the movement of the uh, conductor uh, through the armature there will be the field poles or the flux lines that is the trailing pole tip and leading pole tip which are present uh, when there is the main flux. So you will be alternating having the north pole, south pole and then you have a north pole and south pole which are the field pole lines and this armature is uh, rotating and as a result of rotation there will be some amount of distortion in the main field flux. So flux is crowded at the trailing pole tips but weakened or thinned out at the leading pole tips. So due to the armature reaction what is happening the flux lines which is due to the main flux will be crowded at the trailing pole tips. So you can see in this diagram you have a trailing pole tip so it is crowded in this direction and it is weakened or thinned out at the leading pole tips. So here, uh, here you can see that you have a leading pole tips and it has become a little bit thinner. So the pole tip which is first made during rotation by armature conductor is known as the leading pole tip. And so when the armature conductor, so you have the armature conductor, it is rotating. So if the definition is that the pole tip which is first made during rotation of the armature conductor is known as the leading pole tip and the other is known as trailing pole tip. So when you have a trailing pole tip then it will be flux lines will be crowded when you will be having a leading pole tip then it will be thinner. Now the vector sum of the main flux or the MMF to the armature MMF you will be getting the resultant MMF. So the new position of MNA that is the magnetic neutral axis which was always perpendicular which is always perpendicular to the resultant MMF wave. So here you can see that uh, your direction of the resultant field is in this direction. So your MNA axis is perpendicular. So your MNA axis is perpendicular to the main field. So if you have the uh, geometric field in this direction FM then your GNA axis will be perpendicular 
gn axis will be perpendicular to fm whereas this is your fm and this is your fa that is the armature uh, mmf and this is your resultant field f resultant mmf then the magnetic neutral axis will be always perpendicular to the your uh, resultant field now the new position of mna is always perpendicular to the resultant mmf with the shift of the mna that is the magnetic neutral axis has shifted by theta the brush also shift because the conductor is uh, rotating so the brush will also shift to lie in the new position of mna so earlier your brush was here where gna and mna axis was coinciding now due to the ro uh, rotation of the armature conductor and the action of the armature reaction uh, what will happen the new mna axis has shifted so the brush will always lie in the uh, position of the mna so due to the brush shift that is the forward leading current in the armature is redistributed and earlier which were under the influence of north pole has come under the influence of south pole and vice versa so due to the rotation of the armature conductor now your mna axis has shifted and it is the axis of commutation where the brush will always be present then what will happen the conductors which was under the influence of the north pole has come under the influence of south pole and vice versa because your brush shifting is there and there will be redistribution of the armature current so here uh, you can see what is going on so there is uh, in this conduct uh, armature if you focus then you will see that there is highly distortion of the flux the flux distorted so the flux which was more uniform and symmetrical has now distorted due to the presence of both the flux so armature mmf ofa lie in the direction of the new position of mna so you can see that this was your conductor and suppose the brush has come here then this axis so the, the axis of the brush will be your new mna axis and the armature mmf ofa will lie in the direction of the new position of mna or the brush axis now ofa is not vertical but inclined by an angle of theta so earlier if you remember your fa in the first case was in the vertically downward and fm was here now due to the changing of the mna axis your fa has also moved by an angle theta what is theta theta is the angle of the gna axis and mna axis so if you have a gna axis here and mna axis here then this is your theta so the theta by which the brush has shifted uh, will be the new ofa position so your ofa position has shifted here and if this resultant mmf is resolved into the horizontal component and the vertical component then one which is parallel to the polar axis is ofd and one which is perpendicular to the polar axis that is ofc so it is very important to understand what is ofd and what is ofc so your ofa that is the armature mmf is distributed otherwise you can remove this o term and you can just think that fa is resolved into two component one is known as fd and other is fc so fd is always uh, in the direction of the polar axis so it will be always in the polar axis parallel and it will always be in the perpendicular to the polar axis now we will see the term demagnetizing and cross magnetizing so we have already introduced demagnetizing effect so demagnetizing what it will cause it will reduce the generated emf so demagnetizing will reduce the generated emf and cross magnetizing will distort the flux so cross magnetizing will distort the flux so we will discuss this so the component ofc that is perpendicular to OFM uh, that is main flux will produce distortion in the main field and hence called cross magnetizing or distortion component of the armature reaction. So the FC 
FC which is the component of FA is basically the cross magnetizing component it, it is perpendicular to your polar axis so FC is perpendicular that is at 90 degree to your polar axis and it is known as cross magnetizing effect and cross magnetizing effect is producing distortion in the main field. The other component FD is in direct opposition to the OFM. So your uh, field is in this direction main field FM whereas your FD is in this direction that is the demagnetizing effect of the armature reaction. So it is in direct opposition of the FM and exerts a demagnetizing influence on the main pole flux. So you can see that the north pole was here and south pole was here and this is the direction of the FM which is the direction of the flux. So obviously your flux is produced by this demagnetizing component of the armature reaction. What is happening? It is distorting the, it is weakening the field flux. It is weakening the field flux and it is the weakening component of the armature reaction and it is the demagnetizing component of the armature reaction. So here uh, through this figure you can see that north and south pole are the main flux. So you will be having FM in the direction of north to south which is the main flux. So the demagnetizing component FD is opposite uh, to FM and hence the main flux is reduced. So if the flux is reduced obviously the generated EMF will be reduced because you know that uh, you know that EG that is the generated EMF is equal to K times phi into N. So uh, the generated EMF is depending upon the flux. So if you are reducing the flux obviously the generated EMF will reduce. Whereas if you see the cross magnetizing effect what is happening FM which is in the polar axis and FC which is perpendicular to the polar axis it is causing distortion of the flux. So it is causing distortion of the flux and MNA that is the magnetic neutral axis is always in the line of the brush and it is the axis which is uh, producing your you know, axis of commutation where the generated EMF is zero and the brushes will be aligned in this direction. Now we will discuss uh, in terms of the demagnetizing ampere turn per pole. So under the influence of per pole how many armature conductors will be there. So what is the armature conductors which is causing the demagnetizing effect. So if uh, we know that Z we have always taken for Z total number of armature conductors. So if I is the current in each armature conductor then for a wave winding we take IA by 2 because 2 is the parallel path and lap winding we take IA by P. So this we have taken in generated EMF and theta M is basically the forward lead in mechanical degrees. Now you understand this is your mechanical. So this angle is not electrical rather than the mechanical degree we are measuring. So here if you see this is your machine and this is your GNA line and this brush has moved this side. So this theta m that is the forward lead angle in mechanical degree. Now what is the number of armature conductor in the AOC and angle BOD. So you can see here this is your A, this is your A, this is your O and this is your C. So what is the number of conductors which is present in AOC and BOD. So here you have B and here you have D. Right. So you can see that this is your geometric neutral axis. So it is theta m, this is theta m. So total you have two theta m angle. So obviously if you see the number of armature conductors which is under the influence of uh, AOC and BOD, if you see uh, from here then you will be having 4 theta m because here theta theta 4 times theta will be there. So you will be having 4 theta m and 360 degree is the total angle 
multiplied with the Z that is the total number of armature conductors. So obviously two conductors will sub constitute one turn that is you know that we have already seen uh, here so the turn will be defined in this manner so th this is one turn and two conductors are there one conductor and second conductor so obviously you divided this equation by 2 you will get 2 theta m by 360 into z so the demagnetizing ampere turn per pair of poles so this is the total number of turns in this angle and per pair of poles if you see this is what we have discussed the number of turns like n so you multiply it with the current i that will be the ampere turn you will be getting okay and then this is per pair of poles because always you are having two pair of poles then what is per pole you are having demagnetizing turn then again you divide it with two then these two will cancel out and you will be having theta m by 360 into zi so this is the demagnetizing ampere turn per pole so under the influence of per pole how many conductors are there and what is the mmf what is the mmf that is produced for the demagnetizing effect you will be having zi into theta m theta m is always in mechanical you remember theta m is always in mechanical by 360 degree now similar uh, thing we will do for cross magnetizing ampere turn per pole so we have just obtained under the influence of per pole what is the cross magnet uh, demagnetizing effect now we will take the cross magnetizing effect so if you see uh, the previous diagram here so here you have the cross magnetizing so again we will take the a c and you know this angle d we will be taking so here uh, if you see the derivation cross magnetizing conductor that will lie between aod and boc we will determine and total armature conductor per pole for both cross magnetizing and demagnetizing since total number of poles is basically p so z by p will be the total armature conductor per pole uh, for both cross magnetizing plus demagnetizing now demagnetizing conductor per pole which is already we have found out is z 2 theta m by 360 degree this is the total number of conductors which is already present under the influence of per pole and is producing the demagnetizing effect then if z by p is the total number of uh, conductors under the influence of per pole for both cross magnetizing plus demagnetizing then subtract this demagnetizing effect so you will be having z by p minus uh, the demagnetizing effect so this portion is causing the demagnetizing effect so subtract with z by p then if you take common so it will getting z 1 by p minus 2 3 theta m by 360 degree this you are getting now cross magnetizing ampere conductor per pole so here it is the number of turns so multiplied with the current you will be getting the ampere turns okay so multiplied with the current in the previous equation you will get zi 1 by p minus 2 theta m by 360 degree and now uh, you have to discuss uh, obtain the under the influence of ampere turn per pole so here you just divide it with 2 this expression you divide it with 2 because uh, you know that two conductor will constitute one turn as we have already discussed so sorry here theta m will not be there so 1 by 2 p you have divided with 2 here and these two will cancel out each other so 1 by 2 p theta m by 360 degree then the ampere turn per pole uh, expression will be z i 1 by 2 p minus theta m 360 degree so this expression whatever we have reduced for armature uh, cross magnetizing ampere turn per pole and this expression whatever we have reduced under the demagnetizing effect per pole you have to remember to understand the you know uh, the armature reaction effect and how many conductors is actually producing that armature reaction now certain note you have to do let us note the two points for neutralizing demagnetizing effect an extra number of turns may be put on each pole now you have to neutralize what you have to neutralize 
the demagnetizing effect. Demagnetization effect should not be there. So you have to neutralize it. So how you can do, you put extra number of turns under the influence of each pole. Now for a sunt generator or a series generator, how do we put number of extra turns per pole? So ATD by ISH, this expression you will be putting because you know that MMF is equal to NI. So if you divide this, uh, you know, with current, you will get how many number of turns you have to put. So ATD, that is the uh, demonetizing effect under the effect of per pole. Uh, and divide it with the sun current, you will get how many extra turns you have to put under the purple so that you do not get demagnetizing effect and EG should not reduce because this EG is reducing because of this demagnetizing effect. For series generator, uh, because the in series generator your armature conductor is in series with the field, so in this case you have to divide it with armature current. So armature current is equal to the series current. You know that. So you have to divide with armature current. This is the first point to understand. Second point, we have seen that theta m is basically the mechanical degree. We know that theta m is mechanical degree. Obviously, theta m is mechanical, but we do not do uh, uh, calculation in mechanical degree rather than we do calculation in electrical degrees. So lead angle uh, which is given in uh, mechanical degree has to be converted into electrical form okay or theta, when theta lead angle is given in electrical degree it should be converted into mechanical degree. oh sorry I told the reverse one uh, when because theta m whatever the calculations calculations you have done that is in mechanical degree if electrical degree is given to you you have to convert this theta electrical into theta mechanical by convert uh, dividing with pair of poles. So P is the total number of poles. So divide with P by 2, you will be getting the theta mechanical. So whenever you solve any numerical, just see whether this lead angle is given in electrical or mechanical. If it is given in mechanical, no issues. You can direct uh, do the calculation. However, if it is given in electrical, please convert that into mechanical by dividing with the uh, number of pair of poles. Now, next topic that we are going to discuss is compensating winding and why it is required. What is compensating winding and how it is, why it is required and where it is placed. So, it is embedded in the pole SU slots. So, here this is the pole SU, uh, this is the pole SU, both side, it is the pole SU, right? So it is embedded in the pole SU slots and it is connected in series with the armature. It is in connected in series with the armature such that the current in them flows in opposite direction to that flowing in the armature conductor directly below the pole SU. So here you can see that, here you can see that uh, you have some slots which is made in the pole SU and the some conductors are present there or windings are present there that is known as the compensating winding. So first point to be remembered is that where is the compensating winding present? The compensating winding is present in the pole SU slots. Second point to be remembered is how this compensating winding is connected. So compensating winding is connected in series with what? With armature winding. So here you have the armature winding. So it is connected in series with the armature winding. Why it is connected in series with the armature winding and what it do? It has to oppose the current flowing in the opposite direction to that flowing in the armature conductor. So if you see that you have a plus sign that is the current direct sign. So here you have dot sign. Here you have a dot sign. So here you have a plus sign. So these indicate that the current flowing in the armature conductor and the current flowing in the compensating winding will be in the opposite direction. Okay. Now uh, let us discuss the compensating winding now more. 
so it is used for large dc machine so usually small dc machine do not require only large dc machine will be required which is subjected to large fluctuation in load so when load is changing a lot in large uh, dc machine obviously your armature current will change a lot because there will be a heavy fluctuation so example rolling mill motors turbo generators here you have large dc machine and load a uh, lot of fluctuation will be there in the load now this is the first point second uh, it is neutralizing the cross magnetizing effect so we have discussed the demagnetizing effect how to reduce so demagnetizing effect can be reduced by putting extra number of turns so you are putting atd by ish that is the sunt field or the ia that is the series field so you can demagnetize the uh, cross uh, demagnetizing effect but the cross magnetizing effect will be neutralized with the help of compensating winding so cross magnetizing effect of armature reaction will be neutralized with the help of compensating winding absence of compensating winding result in sudden shifting of the flux forward and backward with every change in the load so whenever there is a change in the load fluctuation then the flux lines will always move forward and backward so this is uh, a disadvantage if there is no compensating winding so compensating winding has to be there fourth point shifting of flux will induce now what happened happened when there is a fluctuation in the load and there is movement of the flux in the forward direction and the backward direction so if there is a shifting on the flux it will induce a statically induced emf statically induced emf in the armature coils whose magnitude depend upon the rapidity of change on the load and the amount of change you know that emf is given by n d5 by dt due to faraday's law and it is equivalent to l di by dt we have a, we have read this in magnetic circuit so the statically induced emf is due to the inductance effect which is result in the production of the emf right so shifting of the flux will induce statically induced emf in the armature coil and its magnitude depends upon the rapidity of change in the load and the amount of change so in case of large dc machine there will be heavy fluctuation of the load and when there is a fluctuation of the load there will be movement of the flux forward and backward and due to the movement of the flux forward and backward you will be having a statically induced emf where in the armature coil and what what it will be dependent on how much rapidity is there in the change in the load and what is the amount of the change so this is the fourth point fifth point is compensating winding provides sufficient mmf to counterbalance this armature mmf so when there is change in the load there is fluctuation in the load there is change in the flux and due to the change in the flux obviously there is some emf induced which is due to the statically induced emf and this statically induced emf has to reduce and this can be reduced with the help of compensating winding and compensating winding is providing sufficient mmf to counterbalance the armature mmf so what is the armature mmf is producing it is counterbalancing that so how it will be counterbalancing so if zc is the total number of compensating winding then multiplied with the armature current so it has to compensate the armature conductor and the armature current so a is the number of parallel path so it means zc will be equivalent to za by a that is the number of conductors present in the parallel path divided by parallel path so if you have the lap winding or wave winding you put the value of a uh, as it is so let us uh, just uh, obtain the value of number of compensating winding that we present so we know that z by p is basically the total number of armature conductor under the influence of purple <clears throat> so under the influence of purple there will be a z by p so number of armature turns so two conductor uh, make one turn so z by 2p because you have already known that two conductors 
conductor number 1 and conductor number 2 will make one turn. So, Z by 2P will be number of armature turns per pole. Then number of armature turns immediately under one pole is given by Z by 2P which you have determined here into pole arc by pole pitch. So, what is pole arc and what is pole pitch? I have already discussed that in detail in armature uh, conductors. You please see that video in detail. You will understand what is pole pitch and what is pole arc. So, Z by 2P into pole arc by pole pitch. So, Z by 2P, if you divide the pole uh, arc by pole pitch, it will come on 0.7. That will be uh, the determining the pole arc and pole pitch depending upon the, you know, the construction of the uh, this uh, armature. So, number of armature ampere turns under the influence of power pole for compensating winding then will be equal to 0.7 into Z by 2P which is the expression to be remembered in order to get number of compensating winding. So, 0.7 into uh, armature ampere turns per pole. So, here you know that is Z by 2P is number of armature turns per pole. So, here you just multiply it with the current. If you multiply it with the current, you will get the things. So, this you will get ampere turns. So, your expression should be 0.7 into Z by 2P multiplied with the current. So, that is the number of armature ampere turns per pole for the compensating winding. So, this is the number of compensating winding that you required for the you know uh, neutralizing the cross magnetizing effect of the armature reaction. So, armature reaction uh, you do the revision how the demagnetizing and cross magnetizing effect produce and demagnetizing effect can be reduced with the help of extra number of turns and cross magnetizing effect will be reduced by using uh, compensating winding. In the demagnetizing effect the generated EMF is uh, reduce whereas the cross magnetizing effect uh, you will be having the distortion of the flux. So, this topic was very important for discussion in uh, DC machine. So, uh, thank you for this topic.